the Job Killing Health Care Law Act. Now, the bill is expected to be introduced later this week and voted on on January 12th. Now, take a look, though, at this comparison. The health care bill was 2,000 pages, but to repeal something, it only takes two pages, of course. Republican Congressman Tom Price joins us live. He is also a doctor, and he is the incoming chair of the Republican Policy Committee. Good evening, sir. Happy New Year, Greta. All right, first of all, just to say, I mean, you guys play the name game. Um, We've got to at least point out you're called the Repealing the Job Killing Health Care Law Act. Sure. So well, you guys are playing the name game as much as the Democrats. Well, this wasn't a threat, actually. This was a promise to the American people uh, that if we were given the privilege of leading once again, what we would do is uh, uh, recognize their wishes and vote to repeal uh, the job-killing bill that, in fact, was the Obamacare bill. All right. So this gets filed online tonight, so yes. American people can take a look at it. Um, when do you think the, the, the vote's going to be on January 12th? What's going to happen between now and January 12th? Well, the 72 hours for the bill to be uh, seen by the American people and by the members of Congress. The Rules Committee will meet on Friday as I understand it, to put out the rules so that we can uh, go ahead and debate it uh, and have the vote on uh, on Wednesday the 12th. It's and very exciting. Okay. Now, what do you anticipate to be the vote? What are the numbers? Because, I mean, now, obviously the House has changed. You had the majority. But what numbers are you looking at? Well, remember that the vote against the bill was the bipartisan vote. Uh, the bi there were Republicans and Democrats who opposed the bill. So I think it will be a bipartisan vote to repeal the bill. Uh, it's interesting that if, if just one in four uh, Democrats vote to repeal the bill, then that is a, a would allow us to override any veto that the president might uh, provide. I pulled up the numbers. There were 34 Democrats uh, who voted no last time around. Correct. Uh, of course, we don't know how many of those are still uh, in the House of Representatives. They've had a little bit of a shakeup. Right? Just a bit. All right, finish it. Okay, now, another thing that's happened today is that uh, uh, the Democratic leadership, um, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Senate Assistant Majority Leader Dick Durbin, Senators Schumer, Murray, and Stabenow have sent a letter to Speaker-elect Boehner, and what they have said is that they are urging the Speaker not to repeal the national health care mm. law, because within the national health care law is the so-called donor provision for the elderly, where they, if that there's, there's yes. that defect in the sense that you, the elderly drugs. pay a certain portion of their medical bills, and when they reach a certain goal, then they um, they get it free. Then when they reach a certain goal, they yes. got to pay it all, and then later on it starts up again. Yeah. Um, so you, you're getting threatened with uh, trying to hurt the seniors. Well, there's a tandem bill that will be introduced as well, and that is a bill that, that directs the committees of jurisdiction, Judiciary and Ways and Means and Energy and Commerce and Education and Labor, to go through this bill and determine whether in an open and, and a deliberative fashion and determine whether or not there's anything that ought to be included in the replacement for the Obamacare bill. Look, this bill is anathema to the American people. Nobody in their right mind, as a physician, I promise you, uh, appreciates what was done in this bill uh, as being being positive for patient care. And so we've, but the status quo is unacceptable. We've got to make certain folks have coverage. We've got to make certain that they aren't tossed off their insurance if they lose their job or they change their job, that they aren't priced out of the market if they have a pre-existing illness or a pre-existing injury. And we've got to address the issue of lawsuit abuse reform that you and I have talked about before. All right, let me just talk about the, for saying this donut hole. Um, the, the fact that the Democrats are saying that you're trying to hurt seniors by the repealing this because it contains the, the fix for the donut hole, could you not, if you wanted to fix the donut hole, simply pass a two-page statute or one-page statute that says um, the donut hole is fixed until further notice, sure. so that's seen, uh, consistent with whatever? Sure. I mean, so so it's, this is in some ways, you know, and, and Republicans do it too, but this is just simply a political threat to make you look like you're bad to seniors. A absolutely. But but what's what's bad to seniors in this bill is that it, de it decreases their ability to utilize Medicare Advantage, the flexible portion of Medicare. It cuts Medicare, this bill right here, cuts Medicare by $500 billion. It makes it so that individuals who have current insurance may not be able to keep it even if they like it, uh, contrary to what the president said. There are a lot of mandates in this bill that make it difficult for not just seniors but all Americans to get the kind of coverage and the kind of health care that they want. So th th there are awful things in this bill. We can fix uh, the, the minor uh, changes that need to be fixed because, as I said, the status quo is unacceptable and that's what we ought to be doing over the next number of months. What's the likelihood you pass this and you could even override a veto from the White House? I mean, and to what extent is this show and tell? Uh, it's not show and tell. It's fulfilling a promise to the American people that we made in our pledge and that, that we said that if we were given the privilege of leading once again, we would vote to repeal the Obamacare bill. So it's fulfilling that promise. Now, is it likely to, is, is the repeal likely to become law? No. Uh, the, it, I, I think the Senate ought to pass it because I think that would be representing their constituents, but I doubt that the president would sign it. And if he did, it would be extremely difficult to override a veto on, on the Senate side. But that's not the point. The point is, is that the House of Representatives, the body closest to the people, 
people in our federal system of government is saying we recognize that you have grave concerns about this bill, that you don't like this, that you believe that it ought to be repealed. And the House is going to listen, contrary to what happened before, listen to the American people, and we're going to vote to repeal. Congressman, thank you. Um, it's certainly going to be interesting to watch, see what happens in the Thanks, next uh, 12 days. Take care. And Democrats, get ready because more trouble may